born on November 12, 1813, and called Joseph Fortunin Francois. In this country, he would have been called Joseph Green. In his native Italy, he was known as Giuseppe Verdi. he was born in Le Rancol, a small town in northern Italy, this section of the country was under the control of France, so that his birth was registered in French. But he was Italian to the core and one of Italy's great patriots. Giuseppe's father, Carlo, and his mother, Luigia, were poor innkeepers who were soon aware that their son was something out of the ordinary. A wandering violinist so entranced the boy that he begged his parents to allow him to study music. They at first refused, but soon an incident occurred which forced them to change their minds. Giuseppe was made an altar boy in the local church, and the first time he assisted at mass was so amazed by the sound of the organ that he was struck dumb. On being asked by the priest for water, he stood motionless and listening. The priest had to give him a push to wake him up, and Giuseppe fell down the altar stairs and fainted. For so sensitive and musical a child as this, his father promptly purchased an old dilapidated spinet and the music lessons began. the modest teaching abilities of Le Rancol, and his parents, poor though they were, sent him to nearby Busetto to study. At first, he stayed with a shoemaker, who was a friend of the family, but then he attracted the attention of another old family friend, Antonio Barecci, and went to live with him. What a stroke of luck. Barecci was a prince of good fellows. He helped Verdi financially, and was a sincere friend all of his life. Verdi studied with the head of the local Philharmonic Society and learned to play the piano, playing duets with Barecci's daughter. Partially with the help of Barecci, the town fathers gave Verdi a scholarship to study in Milan. Naturally, he was thrilled with this, for Milan was the home of great Italian music, and most important, in Milan was the world's greatest opera house, La Scala. Giuseppe's passport of those days tells us that he was 18, tall for his age, brown hair, with a small mouth and a black beard. We know from acquaintances that he had a fierce temper and yet was curiously shy. By the time he left Busetto, he had written several marches and an overture, none of them very good music, I am afraid, but it wasn't many years before he was to be the greatest opera composer in the world. On arriving in Milan, Verdi immediately applied for admission at the famous Milan Conservatory. Much to his amazement, he was refused. Perhaps it was his inbred shyness. At any rate, Verdi was terribly depressed. But he was soon studying with Signor Lavinia, 
who proved to be a very fine teacher. So fine, indeed, that a year or so after having been refused admission to the conservatory, Verdi had his revenge. Verdi's teacher was talking to one of the head professors of the conservatory while Verdi listened in shy silence. The professor was lamenting the fact that he had to give an examination to 28 pupils and all of them had failed. They had to construct a fugue on a subject written by the professor. Lavinia nodded sympathetically and asked the professor to let Verdi try it. The professor gave Verdi the theme and in minutes it was handed back to the astonished man. Not only correct in every detail, but greatly elaborated, because, as Verdi brightly said, the subject matter was pretty thin. After that, that Giuseppe attended the rehearsal of Haydn's Creation, where none of three accompanists appeared. The conductor frantically asked if Verdi could fill in, saying that if the boy could just play the bass line, it would be fine, but not Verdi. He proceeded to play the score in full, without the slightest trouble. So amazed was the conductor that he asked Verdi himself to conduct the concert, and it almost goes without saying that the boy was a brilliant success. As a result of this, he became something of a celebrity in Milan. He was asked to compose an opera to a libretto called Oberto Canto Bonifacio, which while not a vast success, established Verdi as a serious and coming composer. Meanwhile, you'll remember the daughter of Barecci, with whom Verdi played duets. Well, her name was Margarita, and Verdi and she were married. Most unhappily, it was to be a short marriage, for within three years, Margarita and the two sons she had borne Verdi were dead. Verdi was unconsolable. Only his music served to stem his grief. to make many powerful friends in his life. One of them was a young man who had published some of Rossini's operas. His name was Giovanni Ricordi, the founder of the famous publishing house. He was to publish all of Verdi's operas and to make both himself and Verdi wealthy. Then Verdi was also to meet the fine singer Giuseppina Stepponi, who was to be his second wife and his great helper. Yeah. 
His first big success was Nabucodonosor, produced at La Scala and written in three months. Literally overnight, Verdi's name became a byword in Milan and all of Italy. The melodies, the orchestration were strong and Italian. What was more, the people sensed in such sections as the chorus of the Hebrews crying for freedom, their own desire for freedom from the yoke of foreigners and the unification of all Italy. successful was Nabucco, as it was nicknamed, that Verdi was given a contract for his next opera immediately, with the amount of money to be received left blank. He was told to fill in any amount he cared to name. Other operas followed in quick succession, I Lombardi and Ernani. Because the police were afraid that the patriotic sentiments which Verdi often vaguely clothed in foreign dress might arouse the public, he began to have trouble with the censors to his great discomfort. But Verdi was rapidly becoming a name not only in Italy, but in Paris, Vienna, and London. Impresarios, censors, and others were soon to learn that the young man had a hot temper and a whim of iron. He set to music the powerful Shakespeare play, Macbeth, and although it never was a big success, it was one of Verdi's favorite operas. Meanwhile, he traveled to France and England, composing, conducting, and producing his operas. Rigoletto was the setting of a play by Victor Hugo, which Verdi was forced to change time after time by the stupidity of the censor. Verdi knew a good thing when he wrote it too. Realizing that the famous tune, La Donna Immobile, Woman is Fickle, would be a big success. He refused to give it to the tenor to learn until the night before the performance. Even then, Verdi warned him, don't even whistle it outside the theater, because if you do, all of Venice will be whistling it, and I do not want that until after the performance. And not only the tenor aria, but the famous quartet, Caranome, Rigoletto's arias, and in fact the whole opera. It was an overnight success, and it had been written in 40 days. Oh, 
Yeah. 